Located 40 kilometers north of Seattle in Everett, Washington, lies this, the headquarters of Helion Energy. Founded in 2013, the company aims to achieve something that to many may seem a distant dream. By 2028, it hopes to operate the first nuclear fusion plant in the world, capable of producing 50 megawatts of clean, cheap, 24-7 power generation. While some experts have called the targets overly ambitious, the company's work has been far from unnoticed. And a lot of their support has come from one industry in particular. In 2021, Helion received an investment of $375 million from none other than Sam Altman. Yes, that's the same Sam Altman that is the CEO of OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT. In May of last year, the company announced a purchase agreement with Microsoft to supply electricity for their data centers, something Altman himself is also reported to be in talks over. In fact, this relationship between the nuclear energy industry and AI companies is a trend that we are seeing more and more of of recent. And it's not just the holy grail of nuclear fusion being pursued. To put it simply, AI has a consumption problem and its creators know it. This is a data center. A data center is effectively a big secure place where many computers store and manage data and information. It keeps websites, apps, and online services running smoothly and ensures they're available whenever people need them. Nearly all of our daily activities on the internet use data centers, whether it be a Google search, sending emails, using social media, or online banking, and also, of course, artificial intelligence. But all these interactions and processing of information require energy in the form of electricity. And we're not talking about small amounts of electricity either. Some data centers' consumption will equal that of a small city. Data centers themselves are estimated to be responsible for as much as 3% of the world's electricity consumption, a figure that's expected to increase with the growth of AI. But what makes AI models so energy intensive? In short, it comes down to two things. One, the huge amounts of data on which they operate, but also the exponential pace at which AI technology is being adopted. In today's world, AI is already transforming our lives. Within just two months of its launch in late 2022, ChatGPT, as an example, had already amassed 100 million users. From smart assistants to advanced data analysis, AI is revolutionizing industries and everyday activities. But behind this technological revolution lies a growing environmental concern. The growth of AI can be seen just by looking at rising demands on data centers. Data center capacity under construction in North America nearly doubled between 2022 and 2023. While efficiency improvements have managed to curb some of these energy demands, estimates suggest that global electricity consumption of data centers could reach between 620 and 1050 terawatt hours by 2026, up from just 460 terawatt hours in 2022. And this growth of AI is limited by nothing other than the availability of the hardware on which it runs. Training and running AI systems requires immense computing power, consuming significant amounts of electricity. For example, training OpenAI's GPT-3 generated an estimated 500 tonnes of CO2 emissions. Research from the University of Massachusetts Elmhurst reveals that the average carbon footprint of a large language model, or LLM, is around 300 tonnes of carbon dioxide. These can only really be treated as estimates though, as currently quantifying emissions from AI is near to impossible. The biggest reason for this is that tech companies are extremely reluctant to share data, made perhaps even more difficult by the fact we're only talking about a small number of companies who have established themselves at the top of the industry. According to an article in Nature by Payal Dar, the emissions calculations themselves aren't hard. Emissions vary based on things like the location of the data centers, the energy mix, the training duration, and the hardware used. And if we know these, one can estimate the emissions per operation relatively easily. There's therefore a growing need for both transparency and efficiency in AI development. Another critical issue is water consumption. Training GPT-3 consumed an estimated 700,000 litres of water, equivalent to the average US household's usage over 20 years. Data centers rely on water for cooling and producing hardware, with additional significant indirect water consumption from energy use. 
Whilst AI's water footprint remains in relative terms small compared to industries like energy and agriculture, it does cause particular concern in regions with water scarcity. The environmental impacts of AI also extend beyond just the direct resource consumption required for computation. For instance, Microsoft's partnership with ExxonMobil uses AI on the cloud computing platform Azure to optimize mining operations, showcasing AI's potential to drive efficiency in energy intensive industries. The use of AI in aggressive personalized advertising can also promote overconsumption, further straining environmental resources. And the increasing demand for AI models only exacerbates this impact. In the current climate, fighting AI's growth would be like running into a tsunami. There is an inherent economic bias that means AI models will continue to grow in size and number following a pretty exponential trajectory. An analysis by Dario Amadai and Danny Hernandez from 2018 revealed that the computational power required to train AI models doubles approximately every 3.4 months. In 2019, the term red AI was first coined. The paper which named the trend revealed that developers were essentially buying better results by putting more data into the model and doing more calculations rather than focusing on making algorithms more efficient. Ultimately, training models on larger datasets leads to better models, and having a better model means that more people will buy it. In short, there's a monetary incentive to increase computation, but at what environmental cost? For a linear increase in performance, there's said to be an exponential increase in data required, and so also emissions. The alternative to red AI is what's known as green AI, developments that achieve better results without increasing the number of computations required, through better algorithmic efficiency. But if models are only compared on grounds of accuracy and performance with no regard for emissions or energy consumption, this kind of AI will never be able to compete. Now, up to now, this has been a pretty damning account of a technology that also presents huge opportunities to change the world for the better. And you'd be wrong to think there aren't any solutions. Just as any other industry needing to undergo sustainable transitions, there is work going into this. Innovations are making AI more sustainable through advancements in energy efficient hardware and smarter algorithms. For instance, Google's DeepMind has developed AI systems that optimize the energy usage of data centers, resulting in a 40% reduction in cooling costs. Similarly, OpenAI is focusing on green AI, which, as mentioned, prioritizes the development of algorithms that achieve better performance with less computational power. Microsoft's Project Natic is perhaps a more extreme example, exploring underwater data centers that leverage the cooling properties of ocean water, reducing the need for additional energy intensive cooling methods. It's these kind of real world examples that highlight how technological innovations are paving the way for a more sustainable future in AI. Supporters of AI would also argue that while its consumption might be increasing, the tools it provides can be used to dramatically reduce energy and water consumption elsewhere as well as further secondary effects of climate change. Climate Trace, a non-profit organization, uses AI to track emissions from various sources accurately, helping identify major polluters and measure emissions more precisely. Additionally, AI is playing an increasing role in tracking extreme weather events and their impacts, offering valuable insights for climate resilience. Ultimately, I think the key message is that AI as a technology in itself is not inherently bad. Instead, I think it's more the unregulated and rapid growth of it that has people worried. If companies can be driven to provide more transparency and use more efficient systems running on cleaner energy, AI has a huge potential to do good. Let me know how you feel on this issue in the comments. As always, I'm Luke, and this was The Upshift.